Hey everybody, Brian King here. Welcome to another episode of The Mindset King. This is a special episode because not only do I have an amazing guest, but we also have an announcement, which I don't know exactly when we're gonna time it, but I, I'm sure it'll come out organically. And what we're talking about today is the importance of humor in parenting. Because as you know, it can be really serious sometimes, especially when you've got kids that are uniquely challenging. Now, in my case, I have kids that have learning challenges, Asperger's, ADHD, some physical challenges like Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. So I have to be a little extra vigilant with the, be careful, don't do that. Don't jump too high you know, to hit the ground. And plus I have my own challenges, you know, with MS and ADHD. So that can impact my parenting as far as my impulsivity goes. So I can make a lot of screw ups and I have to be prepared to laugh at myself and have some levity in that department. Because if I take myself too seriously, I will want to protect my ego and make a lot of excuses and a lot of rationalizations for very poor parenting. And that can hurt our kids too. So I want to encourage you to open your minds up and take a good look at yourself during this conversation. Because learning to laugh, not only at those awkward situations with your kid, tantrums in public, anyone, or your own <laughs> missteps, if you can laugh at both of those, parenting can be a much more joyful journey instead of something that you dread each day with, oh, I wonder if I'm going to get a call from the school today. I wonder if my kid's going to embarrass me in public today. You follow me? And Ellie Hirsch, who is our guest today, is a kindred Hello. spirit in that regard. And that's why we came together on social media and it quickly launched us into another frame of mind in terms of what we could do together. So without further delay, Ellie Hirsch, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. I'm psyched to be here. It, it's gonna be a thrill. I just have no doubt about it. So tell us first awesome. about your experience with parenting thus far. Sure. So uh, I'm a mom of three awesome boys, uh, six, nine, and 11. And, you know, I find parenting just amazing because it is such a roller coaster. Within five minutes, you can look at them and think, oh my God, like I love these creatures so much. And then the next minute, you're like, you know, so it's just a lot of emotions going on. And I like to um, laugh a lot. Um, in parenting. And that's what I teach people because um, laughing is the best parenting tool around. And like you, you gave that wonderful gesture that sometimes you want to choke them. Often it's laughter in those situations that prevents you from doing things that will result in you parenting in, within a six by nine cell, which is not <laughs> the most effective environment for parenting. So can you give us- It's, a, it's not. <laughs> can you give us a recent example of something you laughed at in your own life? Sure, well, I have many, but I'll give you one from this morning. So as we all know, getting the kids out of the house, um, you know, in the car, it just takes forever. And so as usual, I'm trying to get them to the bus and, you know, my neighbor's outside, but I didn't know he was listening. So I'm like, get in the car. Nope. That door. Nope. That way. Nope. Give me your backpack. And you know, I wasn't yelling because I have a secret. I actually set my clocks ahead five to seven minutes because when we're running late, we're actually on time. So I do build in a cushion for myself. That's a great parenting secret, by the way, but even so, you know, it shouldn't take six to seven minutes to get into the car. And so, you know, they finally got in. And I shut the door and I'm like, oh my God, like really, you know, kind of talking to myself and laughing. And I hear my neighbor say to me, it's like herding cattle. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know you were watching, but you know, it's really funny because everybody goes through the same stuff, but when you can laugh about it and go, you know, that's life, you know, that's, what's going to happen. It's get in the car, get out of the car. You know, we get to the bus stop and everyone's just sitting there and I'm like, Okay, now it's time to unload. So, you know, you just have to laugh at it and share your laughter because even in the most serious of situations, um, it really is a great solution. And that's really the basis of um, our business, parentyouup.com. Now, that was really a wonderful intro to, to our big announcement, parentyouup.com. <laughs> Write that website yes. down, parentyouup.com. So tell us about how your experiences with parenting 
led to the brainchild that is parentyouup.com. Sure. So in 2010, I started Mommy Masters. It really started as a blog teaching um, women that you can all be Mommy Masters, but just realizing that everybody has a different definition of what mastering motherhood is. Um, you know, I'm not better than you. You're not better than me. I would never tell anyone how to parent. It's just about providing the tools to be the best parent you can be today. Uh, and then I came out with my children's CD, which is a Parents Choice Award winner. It's um, uh, Music is Magical, Children's Songs with Ellie. And then started doing the local news parenting segments and it grew from there and my friend brad michaels and i we went to college together and uh with both of our experiences his uh 20 years in business and parenting and also going through um, the court systems with um uh, some personal stuff going on with him and, and his family um we realized that there is an epidemic uh that we need to really address here so he started developing Parent You Up and Biz You Up, and we decided to sort of marry the concepts. And so we created Parent You Up by Mommy Masters and Biz You Up by Mommy Masters, which I'll talk about. It's very related, uh, the work-life integration. Um, and we really wanted to become a 24-7 parenting support tour guide um, with evidence-based behavior modification tools and humor and philanthropy and you know, creating sustainable progress and change, believe it or not, in less than six days. So it's a subscription program that you sign up annually. You do an intake on Parent You Up. That's parent, the letter U, up.com. Takes two to three minutes. Um, it's 20 questions. It dives in a little bit about your family dynamics, what your strengths are, your weaknesses, if there's something going on in your house. Um, within three hours, we will call you to dig deeper. And then within 24 hours, we will deliver a um, action plan for you. And you have 24 access to us. That is true. Parenting is 24 seven. So we believe that your support system should be 24 seven as well. And it's, you know, we call ourselves your new best friends. We're 24 seven, we're confidential and um, we don't judge. We do not judge. You cannot um, really understand what someone else is going through uh, without being in their shoes. So while one mom or dad may look like they have everything together, you might walk in their house and go, oh, okay, now I get it. So- Oh, well, the, the, lab, the, bro the brochure didn't look like this. Yeah, really. You know, it's funny. I had a mom say to me, this was years ago. She said, you always seem to be so happy and having so much fun with your kids. And, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. And I'm always wondering, like, why is she so happy? And then one day you opened up your car door and I saw the inside of your car. And I think like a few things fell out and I started dying laughing because I realized you're not perfect. And I said, that is so true. I said, you know, uh, in fact, and I'll talk about this later, but I did a really funny show with Magic 94.9. We do, it's called Just a Minute. And this is part of the laugh. It's taking 60 seconds out of your day to laugh and take a breath and just not be so serious. And one of the episodes was a tour of a mom's car. Because listen, I'm a neat freak. I like to be neat. But sometimes the car just, I can't, the kids just, I have three kids. It's horrible. So when this, my friend said to me, I saw you open your car door and she started laughing. I loved that because my imperfection caused her to feel human and to laugh. And it's just all about that. It's sharing and caring. And, you know, whether you're a daddy dynamo or a mommy master one day or a mommy mess and a daddy disaster another day, it's okay. And we will teach you um, and really open up your brain space, you know, um, and inject you with the proper tools that you need to, uh, again, sustain progress and change. Dang. Boom! <laughs> or is it boom? I don't know. Boom, yeah, boom. The, the, car, <laughs> the car is when there's this, the real nice, smooth, happy-go-lucky parts of your life tend to be the parts of your life that tor the tornado missed. Yeah. There's the parts of your life that you reserve chaos for, the parts where you just say, oh, I don't care about this part. But right. it's, it's indicative right. of the fact that you try and influence and manage as much as you can, but there's going to be that aspect of your life that's just, forget it. And sometimes yep. that can intrude upon the parts of your life that you believe you have together, which we know is a bunch of nonsense. Correct. Because we're always hitting <laughs> that wall that is outside of our skill set. And there are right. so many 
many parents that I meet, and I'm sure you do too, that will fight the admission that they don't know something. They believe, and I don't know well, where the, the heck failure. Comes from. They, the they, be, they believe yeah. that by virtue of conception, they were gifted with this omnipotent vision that gives them everything. It's like the Brady download. You know, they're supposed to know right. everything and have perfect grammar and be able to manage anything right. life throws their way. And it's a myth, it's a lie, it's a falsehood, whatever you want to call it. Any parent out there that pretends they have it all together is lying through their teeth. And what they're showing yes. you is the need to protect their insecurity. They're Listen. not showing you. <laughs> that is so true. You know, failure is the key to success. You know, when you when you can admit that you had a bad parenting day, you know, pick yourself up, dust yourself off and say, OK, what were the elements that maybe caused me to have this day and learn from it? Perhaps you just had a bad day. Perhaps you had a fight with your spouse. Maybe your kids weren't listening. Figure out what you can do better and try again tomorrow. Um, perfect. Our goal at Parent You Up is not to create perfect parents or perfect children. They do not exist. But again, nobody's perfect. And don't look at somebody and think they are perfect because you do not know what goes on behind closed doors, closed car doors, that is. Um, but, you know, I, I'm j that was a joke, by the way, but you didn't laugh. That's okay. <laughs> But I, I was point, thinking about a, a question that I don't want to forget to ask you. Uh, okay, that's okay. Um, but, you know, listen, if I make myself laugh, that's all that really matters, right? But we're and not you, perfect we're people. And our heads. Strive to be. Right, right. You got to, we want to teach our kids, it's okay to make mistakes. That's when you learn from them. I would rather try something and fail and teach my kids about the whole idea of, you know, putting yourself out there than, you know, going, eh, I don't think I can do this. I don't think that's a good message. And, you know, when my kids make a mistake, I say, listen, you know, things happen. Um, mommy's not perfect. I make a mistake. And then they point out all the mistakes I make, of course. But, um, you, you know, parents exactly aren't enjoying. Oh, of course. But people aren't enjoying the parenting ride. And that's what's sad because you have one chance to do it. And it's not the parent's fault because a lot of times they don't have the tools to do so. And we're talking about all socioeconomic, you know, uh, classes, no matter where you live, who you are, what you do, what you look like, who you love, it doesn't matter. You have to look in the mirror and say, do I need to change my behavior as a parent to change the relationships around me with your kids, your spouse, your coworkers, your family, and yourself. And by doing that, you will change other behaviors around you. And we're really here to help build your village because even if you have friends and a spouse or what have you, when you admit that you need help, you, you tend to feel like a failure. And unfortunately, like you, people view that as very bad, but I think it's very strong when you can admit you need help. Absolutely. I'm so glad you pointed that out because I am approached by typically mothers in this culture mm -hmm. who say, right. my husband just doesn't get it. He is a authoritarian. He wants to parent like his dad did it. And he keeps saying that I don't need to change that young man or that girl's just stubborn and they need to be the one to change as though two people don't form a relationship, that the two people don't have influence. And you're the adult. Your child is looking to you for how to do this thing called life. You can't treat your child as yeah. though they're supposed to have all the skills needed to make a healthy relationship work. It's got to be you. And if you're not prepared yeah. to take that on, guess what? This road is yep. going to continue to be rocky and it's probably going to get worse because your ego is more important to you than parenting your child. That is a good point. Yeah. I mean, the kids aren't born with the right tools. And as parents, we often don't have the right tools. So you do need help. You do need to look in the mirror and think, how can I change my behavior to change other people's? And, you know, it, it doesn't have to be, oh, I'm wrong, or, you know, I don't know what I'm doing, or I'm a bad parent or anything like that. It's a journey together and, and not enough people are having fun at it. You have to have fun with it. You know, when my kids are screaming all three of them in the car and it's mommy, mommy, mommy. And you're like, ah, you know, sometimes what I'll do is I'll say, okay, I sometimes I even pull over and I'll say, listen, let's all get it out at once. You have like 30 seconds on the can of three, let's just scream it out. But after that, we're done. And so I could have chosen to say, everyone just be quiet. But guess what? 
I'm telling, I'm doing what I'm telling them not to do, but now it, it may seem like that this way, but I'm joining them and I am understanding where they're coming from and I'm feeling the same way. So I don't want to yell at them. I want to yell with them. So it's just, you know, thinking a little bit, taking a step back and looking at parenting from a little bit of a different perspective and getting on their level and saying, I get it. I get it. Like you just got out of school. You're all nuts. You want to play. Listen, you know, let's scream together, get the energy out and have fun. And when you do that, your kids look to you, look at you in a different way. And it's that mutual respect of, okay, I remember when I was that age, how does that feel? And it's taking that millisecond to just think about what comes out of your mouth, because what you say, what you do, everything they're watching will impact your children in every aspect of their life. You may not realize it, but it is true. Um, listen, if you're constantly, constantly late to um, drop your kids off at school or whatever it may be, you're teaching them that being on time is not a value. Other people's time is not a value. Everything you're doing as a parent, and I'm not saying there's not a reason why you're late or maybe you can't, you need help, you know, organizing your morning, but um, everything you do is shaping your children. And it's really important to think about it. And we work with children that are one to 22 and above, you know, this is not just for parents of babies and toddlers, which everyone thinks is the hardest, but every stage is hard because every stage is new. Even if you've had other kids go through that stage, because every kid, every sibling is different. Oh, so, yeah. um, I, I've got a yeah. kid that's, I got a kid that's 20 and yeah. right now dealing with his stuff is a heck of a lot harder than dealing with the 16 year old stuff. Right. You know, so, right. But it, it depends right. on your kid and what your life is giving you. And I love the little yes. nuggets that you've been throwing out there, like putting your clock ahead to help you stay on time, pulling over and screaming together. Because what some parents often miss is that it can often take little shifts to really change a dynamic. It's not a matter of sitting down and upending your family culture in order to see improvement. Sometimes it does take right. some drastic shifts, but don't think that your entire life has to be turned upside down in order to see change. It can be little things at a time because some parents will say, oh, I have a hard time with change or it's just the way I am. I'm just too attached to it. When the reality is you're attached to comfort, you're afraid that change will equal loss of control or change will equal pain of some kind. So you can start little and take baby steps and see some tremendous change over time and almost feel like you didn't do a whole lot of work. So don't be afraid of the idea. Don't be afraid of the idea that you may have to make some adjustments to get the results you want. It doesn't have to hurt, you know, and working with people like Ellie and her team, you, anybody who's familiar with me knows I recommend little tweaks, little changes. And that again is another thing that brought Ellie and I together. So let's kind of let the cat out of the bag here. What, what about parent you up and biz you up? And what I'm doing is from here on forth going to be I don't know what you call it, congruent, overlapping. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's increasing solutions for clients and for people. And um, I think that's fabulous. When you can offer additional solutions to people that you're working with, there's nothing better. It's, it's again, creating that internal village for ourselves mm -hmm. so that we can create it for other people. And if people are confused, I just wanna mention what Biz You Up is because we haven't touched upon it, but Real quick, so 63% of small business owners have kids um, the ages of one to 22. And so you think about it at home, it's chaos, craziness, your head is spinning. And also at work, your head is spinning, right? You don't feel um, like you're supported. And so if that's happening in one aspect of your life or both, nothing is working and you're not gonna feel productive. And so it's all about that work-life integration. Many of our Busy Up customers are um, Parent You Up clients as well. And what Busy you Up is, it's our 24 seven business solution. So, you know, let's say you're a mompreneur, dadpreneur, small business, or even big business, and you want that 24 seven support, whether it's logos or um, branding, uh, social media and marketing, website. All of our websites are original. There's no templates. We have an internal um, crew that is 
fantastic. Um, and so we are helping people um, create solutions for their business and helping them thrive at home because they are so integrated. And again, when you feel supported and confident in one aspect of your life, it'll spill into the other aspect of your life as well. And that's part of why I joined forces with my partner, Brad Michaels as well, because I wanted to be able to help um, small business owners. I've worked with so many mompreneurs and dadpreneurs, and now I can actually help them even grow further. And I like to say the cheesy line of, you know, let us build your dream while you live it. Because, you know, when you're doing it all by yourself, which I actually have done, it's a lot of work. And, you know, it, it's, it's nice to be able to concentrate on what your expertise versus having to manage all the little aspects of building your website and then going home and saying, oh my gosh, I'm working too much and my kids, I'm not present. And how do you handle that? So it's all very integrated. And um, right now at parentyouup.com, there's a five day free trial, which is really cool because we do not want your credit card. You know, when you find those cool apps and it's like, oh, it's free for the first week, but you have to give your credit card because you know, you're going to forget. And to, then they, you know, forget to, I, yeah, they forget to notify you that you're going to be charged. Yeah, yeah exactly. The emails got lost in spam, but we don't want your credit card. We, we just really want to meet you and talk to you and, and share with you this amazing opportunity to work with us. And then after five days, you'll see some pretty significant changes. It's actually really, really cool. And again, like to your point, Brian, it's, it's those small changes that, that make a big, big difference. So long story short. Ellie and Brad and her team at, at Parent You Up and Biz You Up and I are going to be working together. We're going to be partnering up because there are a lot of things that they do that I don't do and vice versa. And it's, it, it hurts to turn people away when you know that there are resources out there that can help them. And what Ellie and Brad are doing are yeah. so much larger and so much more comprehensive that when people need more than I can give or they need different from what I give, especially around managing those things that people are afraid to outsource. You know, the building their website, the, the branding and stuff like that. I'm colorblind and I'm a good talker, but I'm a lousy designer. So if people need to have that weight off their shoulders so they can feel better about parenting, now I have some place to send them. Instead of saying, go out on the web and take your chances, you know? Right, exactly, exactly. So it's powerful this, when you can give solutions to people. It really is. So this partnership uh, starts officially now, and I'm really looking forward to seeing where this collaboration takes us and how it helps me to and us to serve you guys even better. So Ellie, thank you so much for coming on today. Everybody keep laughing. Yeah. Uh, make sure yes. you go and check out those sites. I'm gonna be dropping the links in the comment section. If you have any questions for Ellie or I around this topic or any of the topics we've discussed, just ask them in the comments and we will get back to you straight away. Ellie, thank you so much for being on. You're welcome. My pleasure. And don't forget to laugh today, people. Laugh. As often as you can, but not in yes. church. They tend to look <laughs> at you weird. So in any case, this has been Brian. Thank you so much again for watching and listening to the Mindset King. Until we talk again, thanks for being you.